Hello, boys. You know, I uh, welcome, welcome. So uh, I know I said I would, uh, you know, wait for uh, Genshin Impact, you know, to make another video on it. But uh, you know, I need to catch up on my Thursday uploads, and this is a video that I've had in my back pocket for a little bit. So uh, to explain the premise. So to explain the premise, so Tectone did a video like this a long time ago where he basically rated each of the characters uh, how they would fare in a one-on-one -on -one brawl uh, you know, against against him, you know, kind of cage match style. Uh, with without any without any magic, you know, no vision or anything, just just, you know, hey, you know, just it's just what you have with you, like hands, feet, you know, that kind of thing. You know, rate what rate, you know, how he would fare in the ring against them he did this a long time ago so i've been holding this off for a long time uh basically i am doing the same i'm following in tech you know following in his footsteps so uh you know i'm gonna try and keep this spoiler free for the story there's also something there's also some things that i just don't know so you know we're gonna we're gonna kind of we're gonna kinda, i'm gonna kind of estimate as much as i can here now for those of you that know me uh, you know, I had, you know, I, it's been, it's been like a month, it's been like a month since I last hit the gym, but I had been hitting the gym pretty regularly for, mm, I'd say about mm, 10 or 11 months. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not shredded, obviously. I mean, look at me, I'm not shredded or anything, but I think that I have a, uh, I think I have a, you know, a relatively acceptable amount of strength for somebody as, uh, scrawny as I am. So let's get right it. So or categories. So top category is death. This just means that the this just means that I'm gonna that you know in a one on one brawl I am going to die 100 percent of the time. The character will kill me for whatever reason that I explain when I put the character in that tier. <clears throat> the beatdown tier is a description of a fight where I lose. Uh, but I don't necessarily die either because of the kind of sports, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, merciful conduct of the character themselves or because I get a few good hits in and, you know, I, I know that's basically, uh, basically, that's basically what saves me. Uh, 50, 50 is much like Genshin, uh, you know, where I could possibly lose, but there's also a decent possibility that I win. And you know, basing it on a coin flip seems arbit seems an arbitrary enough statistic to kind of put in here that and you know you could make associated jokes about oh uh, chi chi, which uh, it's kind of funny because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure uh, I would put chi chi there, but not the point. Uh, win. This is just where I win. It's basically the opposite of beatdown, where I don't necessarily have the you know, have the leftover strength after taking some hits to you know murder the person that I am fighting against, but at the same time, it's clear that I've won the fight. Curb stomp is the opposite of death, where I am where I am so where I am capable of overpowering the character to such an extent that I can kill them. And then unreleased is basically my way of saying I have is basically my way of saying I've basically lost interest in the game and I'm not looking as deeply into it anymore. So that's where these characters go, which as of date of recording, which is December 9th, we have Ito, Goro, Shenhi, and, um, um, yeah, her, I forgot her name. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So let's get right into it. Again, I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free. So we start, we start with Bale. Now, without, again, without getting too far into spoiler territory, Bale is a... You know, is a cold, merciless ruler who has existed for quite some time uh, as one of the Archons and is most likely well versed in many different, uh, many different martial arts and therefore would be able to, uh, you know, eviscerate me with her bare hands and, you know, I would be able to do nothing about it. That and she's also probably still hiding the sword in her cleavage, which, while technically cheating, is you know still something that would probably uh, probably nobody would say anything about after you know after she bisects me and the cage simultaneously. So, I'm going to die in that fight. <laughs> Moving on to Yanfei. Uh, Yanfei is physically weak. At least she appears to be, but she is half human, half 
creature of some kind. So I'm going to say that it's it comes down to 50-50, whether or not she does have some kind of monstrous strength that she can call upon when uh, the magic has been taken away. You know? Uh, moving on to Jean. Jean is the acting grandmaster of a knightly order uh, that watches over the entirety of one of the seven nations. Now, the effectiveness of said knightly order is up for debate and you know, entirely one-sided if you're a Deluc main. Uh, but I do believe that knightly training does give one a certain degree of physical strength, one that I do not have. Therefore, I think that Jean would beat my ass, but I don't think that she would kill me if the spy... If, if the fight specified that she didn't have to, which, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, these next, these next, uh, uh, five, these next five are on the complete opposite end of that spectrum. I mean, I, not, not particularly. Like, like, all five of these people are merciless killers who would not only beat my ass, but make an example out of me to prevent frivolous challenges in the future. Like, you know, Rosaria notwithstanding, uh, all of these people are, well, and Kaya, I guess, all of these people are not uh, cryovision users, but they do have that kind of cold, merciless look about them, which puts Zhao, Diluc, Rosaria, who I would let kill me because goddamn, uh, Tortellini, uh, and Kaya all go in the death tier. They would all beat my ass and kill me. So, next are the Travelers. I'm going to do both Travelers at the same time. Because it, you know, I don't want to get into spoilers, so I'm going to make them interchangeable. But, uh, you know, the Travelers are celestial beings who travel from world to world and have weird rules applied to them when it comes to the power system of the world that they're in. Therefore, ew, I have no idea what their maximal capabilities are. But, given that they are, again, celestial beings capable of interworldly travel, who have, you know, weird rules when it comes to the power, the powers of the world that they're in, I believe that, uh, I believe that one of them would kill me, and the other would merely defeat me. And therefore, I think we'd be, you know, it's, I'm kind of betting on the one that would not kill me outright, and would just, you know, kind of like, kick my ass. You know, kind of like a, you know, a retreat, like a treasure hoarder, throw down a smoke bomb and leave. Alright, next is Ganyu. So, uh, Ganyu is much like Yanfei, except Ganyu, I don't believe, has human parentage. Uh, which means that she's more, she's more creature than anything else. Now, uh, what this says about her, the possibility of her having extreme strength, I have no idea. But I do believe that she would be capable of beating my ass. But given her nature, I don't think that she would kill me. Now, uh, Eula, uh, Eula wields a claymore, which means that she has r a ridiculous level of strength, especially given how she wields a claymore. Just watch those animations, you know, especially especially attack number four. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, this, this means that Eula would most likely, uh, kill me. However, given that she is a Knight of Favonius, I do believe that she would restrain herself, or at least attempt to, somewhat. Especially given that I'm not a real enemy, I'm not a real threat. So I think, I think, I hope, I, you know, I'm gonna say that, you know, I'm gonna say, I hope Eula doesn't outright kill me. Um... So Zhongli, uh, in a similar in a similar boat, uh, Zhongli is uh, you know he's he's a gentleman. He seems really gentlemanly. Uh, he's also he's also uh, you know quite learned, learned even. Uh, and you know this means that he's probably at least acquainted with various forms of martial arts. Uh, however, given his gentlemanly nature, I do not believe that he would kill me. He would probably just you know kick my ass and then give some kind of anecdote about how the challenge that I put out to him in this instance was foolish. Uh, which, you know, hey, me not dying, that's pretty good. Alright, so next is Zinyan. Uh, so, I mean, even in-game, Zinyan's kind of terrible. 
uh, and I don't, but uh, she's she does have that claymore strength. Uh, so you know, it, it's really dependent. You know, and me knowing that, it's really dependent on whether or not I can actually, you know, like it's it's really dependent on whether or not I can actually outmaneuver Xin Yan because she does seem kind of she does seem kind of clumsy that or I just pull a frog out of my pocket and just you know toss that out onto the field you know uh you know go poly whirl or whatever you know so I think that's kind of a 50 50 I'm not actually legitimately saying I would pull a frog out of my pocket for for that fight I'm saying that you know it's it's a matter of outmaneuvering her uh so next is Xing Cho uh, Xing Chou is the disciple of an ancient martial arts sect who, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure their print, their principles, but his principles are more aligned towards justice. That being said, I think that we would be fairly evenly matched if I too had martial arts training. However, I don't. Therefore, I believe that I would lose this fight, but I would not die as a result. All right, so uh, Razor. Uh, Razor has Claymore strength. He is a savage child, and you know, given you know, given that, given that, I do believe that you know, even if it is accidental, he would kill me. Uh, the same cannot be said for Noel. Noel is uh, Noel is more gentle, as it were, and I think it would be it would be difficult to actually get her to participate in the fight, but in the event that she does, given how durable she is, I would not be able to actually inflict any noticeable damage with just my hands. So, Noelle would beat me just by virtue of her endurance alone, but then you factor her strength into it from wielding a claymore, and I definitely lose. You know, you know, we're similar for Beto, uh, but except Beto doesn't have the, uh, what is it, the knightly etiquette that Noelle has. I mean, Beto still does wield a claymore, so she is still fiercely strong. She also defeated a sea monster by cutting its head off in a single blow. Uh, that's pretty impressive by itself, and also, you know, implies to me that, yeah, Beto would probably kill me, you know, Give me the Bane crack, you know, I guess I'm Batman now, and I, I would die. I would definitely die. So on the complete opposite of the stretch spectrum, I do believe that uh, my fight with Barbara would be one-sided. Uh, I would, I, you know, I'm not saying that if I put somebody in the curb stomp category that I would kill them. I'm not that way. Especially, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, some of the others who are probably going to end up in that tier. But uh, I'm saying that my victory would be so one-sided that I could if I was inclined. So if Barbara is not physically strong and her powers consist of throwing water on people and healing. Uh, but if we take away the magic, then... She's not really got anything going for her. She wields a catalyst, so she doesn't have the kind of dexterity that comes with a sword or a polearm or the strength of a claymore uh, or even, you know, the dexterity of a bow. So she's kind of got the weakest weapon category in terms of viability should the magic be taken away. <clears throat> now, that being said, uh, Chong Yun does wield a claymore, uh, and he is from a family of exorcists. I do not believe that he would kill me, or vanquish me, and if he did, then his powers would instantly vanquish my spirit, so that would not be good, but he would definitely, he would definitely give me a run for my money. <clears throat> so, uh, next is Venti. So, I think Venti is a 50-50, and here's why. So, Venti would definitely cheat. Venti would definitely cheat and still whip out the magic. Now, what results from this, other than a possible disqualification, uh, is either, you know, he's, he's going to use the wind magic to charge me down, or something, maybe levitate, you know, like in, uh, like, uh, Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man 1, except, you know, he's, he's floating, not clinging to the wall of the cage. Uh, and, uh, the levitation comes with one of two consequences. Either A, I cannot hit him and win by virtue of him just wearing me down, or B, he gives it a bit too much power, slams into the top of the cage, you know, and falls back down, rendering him unconscious, in which case I had win without even touching him. 
which is whatever, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, Shangling. So, you take away, you take away the magic from Shangling, and what do you really have? I mean, she's got, uh, Guoba, who is like, uh, she's, you know, Guoba isn't even something generated by her vision. He's not, he's not quite a familiar, he's more like a pet that she has that's, you know, not really related to her vision whatsoever. So, but he's also not something that she can bring into the ring with her. So we're left with a chef. I mean, you know, we're left with like this teenage chef. Uh, you know, she doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's implied anywhere, at least to my knowledge, that she has any kind of martial arts training uh, or you know, great skill outside of cooking and you know, the use of a spear. So I think I think that this would be a pretty pretty decisive win on my part. All right, so we got Chi Chi, and I said I was gonna put Chi Chi in the fifty fifty as a as, you know I said that as a joke early on in the video, but it's it's actually legitimate, and the reason why is uh, you know something that anybody who has seen is this a zombie would understand. Now Chi Chi is a zombie. This is something that you learn pretty quickly, so I don't really consider it spoilers. Uh, but for those of you who haven't seen is this a zombie let me give you a bit uh, let me give you a bit of information about where my thought process is coming from so in that anime the main character who is a zombie uh, has the ability to kind of uh, remove the restraints on his strength much to the detriment of his body and uh, if Chi Chi is capable of this I will lose hands down not even it's not even a contest she will she will punch a hole in in my torso and I will collapse dead onto the floor this is something that would be uh, this is something that would be unfortunate but it is a possibility now on the offhand that you know Genshin impact zombies don't operate by this rule then I think I would win because I'm pretty sure all I have to do is take off that spell tag on her forehead and then something happens in which case you know it's just like you know, that's, a, that's a pretty easy thing to do so you know, it really depends on how Kenshin Impact Zombies operate. Now, uh, Lisa. Lisa is a 50-50, and this is largely dependent on which Lisa I am fighting. And what I mean when I say that, am I, is, is, am I fighting Lisa with her EN voice actor, or am I fighting Lisa with her JP voice actor? If it's EN Lisa, I win, hands down, you know. Lisa isn't particularly uh, a physical specimen, at least not in terms of strength, but, you know, we'll just uh, <clears throat> gloss over the other thing. <clears throat> but if it's JP Lisa, if it's JP Lisa, I will, uh, I will, I will, <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, <clears throat> she's got, she's got Kiara's voice actor. And that, uh, you know, for any of you who've actually played Fate Go or know what I'm talking about, I think you know where I'm going with this one. I mean, you know, I, mean, I wouldn't make it look like I let her win, but I'd let her win because, <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. So who tell? So uh, when I orig I've done a couple of different takes of this video, and this was before I had played Hu Tao's story quest, so I didn't really know a lot about her. Uh, you know, I thought I thought that she was in a similar boat as Chi Chi, where she was like a zombie or something. However, I have learned from that, uh, and I now I now know I now know what Hu Tao is about. Now take away the magic, and she's the magic of a vision, and she's still got like all the weird, creepy, undead stuff that she can do. Also, she, you know, she, she does you know without you know again. I'm trying to avoid spoilers. She does kind of have an important job in the world, which would most likely necessitate some kind of some kind of uh, some kind of training in order to assure that. Which is why I believe I would be able to win, but I think it would be pretty hard fought. And pretty hard, yeah, yeah. I think it would be a pretty hard fought victory on my part. All right. So next is Diota. Diota is like uh, she's. She, I mean, she's like this tall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that can be seen on camera. She's like this tall, and she's a bartender. Take away the magic, and you know, also like her bartending equipment, and she can't 
splash a drink in my face that's going to make me pass out. So I think I would be able to pretty e pretty easily and pretty decisively win. All right, next is Fischl. So Tectone said like, oh, Fischl would be able to do some decent damage because she's got a bird and she's crazy. I, she's not crazy. She's just a teenager being a teenager. And you know, take away Oz and the electro magic and the bow, considering it's, you know, barehanded. And I'm pretty sure anybody could beat Fischl. Not even, not even a contest. So, Kazuha. Kazuha is a wandering samurai. Uh, and while I don't know too much about samurai codes, especially in Genshin Impact, especially in relation to Genshin Impact, but if I were to issue a challenge like this, I believe that he would be duty-bound to kill me. Uh, and given that he is a samurai... Uh, I do believe that he would be capable of doing that. So, you know, he, he might not like to do that, but I do believe that he would be bound by his code to do so. And given that I would be the one issuing the challenge, uh, it's assumed that I'm fine with that, and that makes sense. So, Ningguang... Oh, Ningguang is, you know, the, the, richest, the richest person in Taibat. At least, uh, I think. If not, she's pretty close. Uh, and she, you know, Scott, she's got the Geovision, blah, blah, blah. Uh, take that, take away the Geovision, and we're left with someone who isn't particularly physically impressive, but she does have those claw things, which I think would be able to do some pretty significant damage. Uh, so I think I would be able to win, but I would have some pretty deep lacerations in my flesh that would need tended to. And I know some of you might be saying, Oh, GZ, why are you letting uh, Ningguang have her claws? Well, you know, it's part of her outfit. All right, if it's part of the outfit, I'm willing to let it slide. So, <clears throat> Kaching. Uh, I don't actually have Kaching still to this day. I, I, you know, I mean, you've seen all the whaling videos that I've been, that I had done in the past. Uh, and I don't have Kaching or Chi Chi. But I do have like a C3 gene. Thanks, Mahoyo. Uh, so I don't know. I don't actually know that much about Kaching other than what I've seen on those, you know, Kaching main YouTube channels that make those memes. Uh, so what I do know is rather limited that and the information presented in game in the story. Mm. Mm, sorry. That and what has been presented in game in the story. So. Kaching is you know, uh, like the vice president of Li Wei, essentially. <laughs> it's a rather derivative way of putting it, but essentially, she's the second in the second in charge in Li Wei. Uh, and you take, you know, I'm fairly certain that she didn't want her vision, and as a result, could probably do without it. And physical Kaching seems to be a thing that I've heard about, so I do believe that it does it does come down to to what extent she has some kind of martial training to be able to to kind of evaluate that. Uh, returning back to Mondstadt, uh, Amber is a Knight of Bonius. She's also terrible in-game. However, knightly training does give one a certain degree of strength, stamina, endurance, you know, a bunch of things, you know, blah, 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 etc., etc. Amber is still terrible. And I think that she would rely on, I think she would rely on speed. However, I too would also make use of speed. Therefore, I believe that it is possible that I would win. No bow, you know, so she's brought into a close quarters conflict, which might not be advantageous to her. However, you know, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Now, uh, Kujo Sara, on the other hand, uh, is, she's not human, particularly. She's she's some kind of creature, some kind of Inazuman creature. However, her wings will be useless in the cage, and her ridiculous shoes will become, will be, will be something that I will be able to use to defeat her. However, she is still the general of an army, and that means she probably does have a, a huge extent, a huge amount of martial arts training, which means that I would need to be able, I would need to exploit these weaknesses that I have just listed, in order to defeat her. However, it is likely that she would be aware of this, take the fucking ridiculous shoes off, in which case, I'm fucked. 
Now, uh, Bennett. Uh, I... Yeah, I wouldn't say Bennett I would be able to win pretty easily against, and this is by virtue of his awful luck. Now, it doesn't seem to be... That doesn't seem to be a product of his vision. It just seems to be a fact of his life. So if I, you know, if I challenge Bennett to a cage match, it's more than likely that he won't even show up because he'll get wrapped up in some subplot on his way to the cage match. And in the event that he does show up, what's probably going to happen is like a piece of the cage is going to rust and fall down and hit him in the head and knock his ass out. In which case, you know, it's not really... It's, you know, at that point, at that point, you know, the, the crowd isn't going to say anything if there is a crowd, and I'm just, I'm just going to be disappointed in myself for doing such a thing. Uh, Kokomo. Right. Uh, so apparently she is a strategist. Um, she's also a priestess. She did, she seems to have, uh, she seems to have led a somewhat sheltered life. And isn't you know physically imposing. She's she's five star Barbara. Let's just let's just put her function in game out there so that you can understand the, the context. She's five star Barbara, but that doesn't make her any more that doesn't make her any more likely to be able to actually deal damage to me. That and given the way she seems to write her strategies, I think during the fight she would be bogged down by her own mental processes, and that would cause that would just make me win. Uh, Kalia's a child. Uh, yeah. That's all I got. So, Aloy. Uh, she is the PlayStation crossover character. I have not played Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, so, I just, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of be grasping at straws here as if I haven't been the entire time. So, Aloy, she's a hunter of some kind, some kind of, you know, hardened survivor uh, which means that she would most likely be able to, to, to take me down. Uh, I, I don't know about the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the kind of principles that she adheres to when it comes to things like murdering those who challenge you to a fight. Uh, but, uh, I, I, you know, I think she would definitely be able to beat me in a fight. Now, Mona, I have seen... I have seen, I have seen so much horrible shit happen to Mona, and some of the, the majority of that horrible shit does take advantage of the fact that she is not strong, and being able to scry into the future, uh, it really isn't helpful for doing for winning a fight that you are in once you have landed in that situation you kind of have to you know you're gonna you're not gonna be able to scry during the fight therefore you're going to have to rely on the information that you get about the fight beforehand and in that case you once you put those predictions into action you've shifted you've shifted the timeline that you're on and without getting too convoluted uh, i would be able to easily defeat mona However, I would not do the things to her that I have seen online. Oh, you would. It's, 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 yeah, it's, you know, it's disgusting shit, but hey, here we are. So, Toma. Toma is uh, a housekeeper, but that's really giving himself not enough credit. Um, he is rather skilled with a spear, but again, we're not doing this with weapons, because otherwise, what weapon am I going to use? Uh, you know, he's, he is rather skilled with a spear. Like I said, get, you know, making him, you know, him to himself describing as a housekeeper is giving him a bit, uh, is giving him a bit too little credit. Uh, to this end, I believe that Tomo would be able to defeat me, but I don't, I think that his nature would prevent him from outright killing me, which I appreciate, uh, again. Uh, Yoimiya, Yoimiya is a f fireworks girl uh she is she you know she's she's gonna inherit a fireworks shop probably go deaf just like her dad uh that being said she you know without without pyrotechnics i don't think that she has much combat ability 
So I think that I would definitely be able to win the battle uh, and come out unscathed, unless she snuck some fireworks in, in which case, you know, I'm going to have some, some burns to think about, but I've been burned before. Anyway, Albedo. So, uh, the recent events shed some light on Albedo uh, and his proclivities and capabilities, but given that I am not one of those things that he would be inclined to uh, stab or murder, uh, I think... See, Albedo, Albedo is tricky. He's a planner. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be able to strategize... He'll be able to strategize during the fight, and the longer the fight goes on, the more likely it is that I would lose. Therefore, I would be reliant on the fight ending quickly, which is entirely dependent upon me being able to out-adapt Albedo's strategy. However, as the fight progresses, he will develop better and better counters to me, and he's a Knight of Favonius, so again, knightly training. So Ayaka is a Ayaka is the, the daughter of one of the prominent families in Inazuma, and to this end, she has been trained to live uh, to live and display the utmost elegance in all situations. That being said, she also has training with a sword, which is martial arts training. So I believe that she would be able to defeat me. But you know. I, but I think, I think that without the sword, I think that she's been primarily trained in the use of a sword. And so without that, that puts her at a bit of a disadvantage against someone who has similar training. I do not have that similar training, meaning it's probably going to come down to kind of a 50-50 split. Whether or not, you know, I'm able to win or she's able to win. So, uh... Sayu. Sayu has... Sayu is, is, is a ninja whose primary specialty is camouflage, running away, blah blah blah, etc. etc. So I think that that would be a pretty easy win for me because if she can't escape the cage, if she can't get away from the opponent that she is supposed to be uh, dealing with, she also has Claymore Strength. I forgot, so never mind. We'll just put that as a solid win because I probably am going to have a broken arm at least. Uh, so, you know, if she can't get away, then, you know, when she's cornered, she'll, she might, she'll probably end up lashing out, in which case my arm is going to be broken, at least that, you know, arm, leg, ribs, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, something's getting broken, and I'm not going to be happy about it, because, you know, I have been forced to do this, <laughs> which, you know, the, the context surrounding this, this fight is something that could be discussed in and of itself. But our final character is Sucrose. Now, uh, Sucrose is like Yonfei, I believe. That or she's like Ganyu. Either way, she's, she's like a creature of some kind. That being said, her nature and just, you can see her nature just ooze out through her attacks. She is, I'm, I'm fairly certain if she wasn't a Knight of Favonia, she would be 100% a pacifist. And... You can kind of see this in her attack animations. And to that end, I believe that I would be able to defeat her rather easily. But uh, there we go. Each Genshin character has been rated in accordance with my ability to defeat them or their capacity to outright murder me. Uh, you know, if the tier list is on tier maker, so you can, you can definitely, you know, kind of go through this thought experiment yourself. Make one yourself. Um... But yeah, you know, until next time, and GZ, later.